Welcome back to AgriTalk, the Missouri State Fair. Very happy to have with us Jeff Windet, Executive Vice President, Missouri Cattlemen's Association. We've been talking a lot about Missouri Farmers Care, this coalition of ag groups within the state of Missouri that really is doing a lot of great educational work to help get agriculture's message to consumers. Jeff, thank you for joining us. And it is it is great to see agriculture come together on a joint effort like this and really get the word out. Well, it certainly is, Mike. And uh, uh, starting almost two years ago, we had uh, a, a group of uh, agricultural organizations come together. And we've had, uh, right today, 21 uh, state organizations come together. And obviously, a lot of this had to do with the uh, Proposition B and uh, uh, dealing with the Humane Society of the United States. So uh, I've never seen an issue galvanize agriculture like like that issue has. We've continued to stay together, and we're working on a number of issues. We talked earlier, and we've been talking throughout the summer about the food drive that will be going on here at the uh, State Fair tomorrow. That's another way of reaching out and, and helping people across the state. Well, that's true. Uh, starting about 730 tomorrow morning, we're going to do a canned drive, the Missouri Farmers Care. Uh, we want to communicate to the consuming public as they come through the gates that uh, uh, what Missouri Farmers Care does and, and educate them a little bit on that. If they bring uh, some food, some canned goods with them, they can drop that off and get a reduced admission price into the state fair. Yeah, we encourage people to do that. If you listen to St. Louis Cardinals baseball, you hear a lot of Missouri farm families featured on, uh, on the commercials that run there. Again, that's the part of Missouri Farmers Care and the outreach program. Well, I think what we try to do is be very proactive, and that is one one section of Missouri Farmers Care that we do through our merchandising councils to promote uh, and, and, and try to educate our consumers as to what Missouri farmers really do and where their food comes from. And that is a, a tremendous program that we have in conjunction with the St. Louis Cardinals. What other types of things do you have in mind or will be doing what kind of project? Well, we again, we want to be proactive. We're looking at uh, maybe doing something on the policy side um, to really protect uh, Missouri animal agriculture. So uh, when you look at the groups that have all come together, uh, we're going to be looking and exploring a lot of the policy type of issues, and we'll see how that evolves as we go forward. As we just talked about with Blake Hurst, uh, this latest effort now by Humane Society of the United States when it come in, change the, uh, you know, the state constitution. Uh, obviously, those are the types of things that you always have to be aware of. Well, it is, and, and uh, uh, they make these threats, and, and uh, the voter protection ballot initiative that's going to be coming out where 75% of the legislators have to agree to change it, uh, before we'll move forward. So, uh, you know, that's good in some respects. It's bad in others. So it's kind of a double-edged sword that we're keeping an eye on. Well, Missouri Farmers Care, it's a, it's a great project, great coalition, and, and wish you the very best as you keep moving forward. Before I let you go, I want to get your hat back on for Executive Vice President of the Missouri Beef Association. You and I were talking before going on the air, and I think it's really an underreported story that, uh, you know, a lot of people aren't really aware of. Uh, cattle numbers in this country are down dramatically, especially with the drought conditions and herd liquidation going on across the country, and, and it's not like we had an oversupply going into this. No. That's exactly right. Even without the uh, drought situation that everybody's heard about in, in Texas and Oklahoma, we were short on cow numbers anyway. So the, uh, what it means for the nation's beef supply, uh, we were probably going to be short anyway. Now with the drought and the severity of the drought all the way across Texas, Oklahoma, the Gulf Coast, um, it's impacting over half of the nation's cow herd. So it's, it's going to have a dramatic impact on uh, commodity prices and uh, uh, probably meat prices too. Something to watch going forward. All right, Jeff, thank you very much. And people should be watching for different things going on with Missouri Farmers Care. Absolutely. We're, uh, uh, we're being proactive, as I mentioned before, and we're trying to get ahead of some of the issues that, that's facing all of animal agriculture. Very good. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. Jeff Wendat, Executive Vice President of the Missouri Cattlemen's Association. All right, let's uh, bring in now, as we go over to the uh, other side, the Missouri Beef Industry Council. Katie Holtman is with us, Director of Communications. And Katie, thank you for being with us. And busy time for you. A lot of different beef promotions going on. That's right. We are um, 
just finished up the Missouri Beef Industry Council 4-H beef demonstrations on Saturday um, in the Beef Showcase just north of the Beef House here on the state fairgrounds. And uh, we had nine contestants this year. And uh, we had everything from deluxe cheeseburger salad to marinated steak. And uh, the cool thing about that is that not only are those youth learning those presentation skills, but they're also learning to cook with beef and gaining confidence in that and then taking that back to their families and their friends. And so just kind of um, giving that confidence to really, to really cook with beef and enhance beef demand. You have more coming up, right? More things coming up? We do. Um, our Missouri Cattle Women's Association is in the beef showcase all week long. They're doing beef demonstrations every day from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. on the hour. Um, and that program is funded through the um, beef checkoff. And uh, so they're doing all kinds of different recipes. And they've got take-home materials and beef nutrition and recipes and all of that fun stuff. Now you want people to go home from the fair and try some of these things out at home. That's exactly right, and that's why those recipes that we're using are really easy and fast and meals that families are really going to gonna utilize, you know, with ground beef or cuts that are easily found at their grocery stores. Seems like you're, there's constantly a battle when you're in the red meat industry because somebody's always coming up with some story or some study and trying to link red meat to some kind of health problem. So you, it seems like you're constantly having to try to get out there and get the nutritional message out about beef. And that was one thing that we really showcased during our 4-H demonstrations. Um, we provided those students with the resources they need to, to find out about beef nutrition and to, to spread that message through spokespersons, um, you know, in youth programs or um, wherever they're doing those demonstrations to really get out beef nutrition information or just information about the cattle industry as a whole. They can be great ambassadors just talking to their own friends. Oh, that's exactly right. One question was asked, now how are you going to get your friends to try this? There's lots of vegetables in here. And she said, well, I did this at my achievement day, and, and I didn't have a problem, you know, bringing, bringing the beef and the vegetables together was a perfect fit for her. So. so this fair is quite a showcase for the beef industry, really. It really is, and like I said, we're located just north of the, the Beef House, which I know has been doing very good business and uh, serving up some great ribeyes. And then if you travel just north every hour on the hour, you can find those um, demonstrations so you can take, after you've had a good ribeye, you want to go home and cook some more beef. So that's where you'll visit the Missouri Beef Showcase. Very good, Katie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sounds good to me. Jeff, come back over here. Tell me about uh, one of the best places to eat on the fairgrounds. Well, we think uh, we obviously have the best restaurant on the fairgrounds and probably the, the busiest restaurant in the state of Missouri uh, during the state fair, the Missouri Beef House. Every time I go there, you got to stand in line. I mean, the lines are usually out in the street. That tells you that people want in there. The, the lines are usually out in the street, but we've got it so efficient right now, you never have to wait in line very long. So we try to move people through as quickly as possible and, and give them a great eating experience. We, we take a lot of pride in providing the best quality meat we can possibly provide during the state fair. You want them to go back with the best possible beef eating experience. That, that's exactly right, and we think we, we can achieve that. I think you can. You always have. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Jeff Wendett, Executive Vice President, Missouri Cattlemen's Association, Katie Holtman with the Missouri Beef Industry Council. That's going to wrap it up for us here at the Missouri State Fair in Sedalia. If you have a chance, uh, come on out and enjoy this fair all this week. Now, we're off to uh, Springfield, Illinois for the Illinois State Fair Agriculture Day there tomorrow. We'll be at the Commodities Pavilion right across from the grandstand. I'll be eating beef there as well. Thanks for joining us. This is AgriTalk, the voice of rural America.